In this presentation, I will try many different machine learning algorithms and methods to try and predict the MVA's most valuable player. A brief history on the MVP voting in the NBA. Historically, the best player on the best team from that season has won the award. However, in more recent seasons, since about 2000 or so, data and analytics have helped voters understand which players are truly valuable. Unfortunately, there are still faulty votes cast today for a multitude of reasons, such as voters against analytics. They would rather use what they call the eye test. They believe that when they watch a player, they know who's really good and who isn't, regardless of what the numbers say. These are often voters who voted before the MBA shifted to using analytics for these kind of things. Additionally, international voters who have access to less live games than domestic voters due to the time change. And one more reason is that there are local beat reporters who have votes, but they only watch this team that they write about very often and don't get to see teams other than when they play the team they write about. There are some statistics that help us determine if a player is valuable. However, there are some issues with these individual statistics as well. One of them is called win shares. It determines how many wins a player adds to their team. It can be very helpful in some instances, but it can get messed up a bit if the rest of the team is very bad. If one player is on a team who has an amazing season, but he didn't have a great season, his win shares will be higher, and vice versa. VORP, or value of a replacement player, much like win shares, is also an estimate of a value one player has over their backup. This can also be inflated if the player's backup is way below league average. Box plus minus is the point differential of the team that specific player is on and ignores it while they are not. For example, if a player plays 32 minutes out of a possible 48 minutes, and his team is up 18 in those 32 minutes he plays, his box plus minus for that game will be 18. But this, team, this statistic is purely based on the team's success, not specifically that player. These three advanced metrics are all helpful, but none of them are all encompassing. To fix this, I've created a super metric that includes all three of these value-based statistics, plus many other traditional statistics, such as points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. I call this season score in my pandas data frame. Initially, I plotted all of these and created a linear regression model that could try and predict the season score based on however many games played a player has. But these two things aren't really super related, and thus the data is very spread out. We see the same issue here with the polynomial regression. However, this does fit slightly better because towards the right upper hand where the higher value players are, it does tend to fit a few of those a bit better. Next, I went with a k-nearest neighbors approach. However, the average accuracy of the KNN model was about 0.25, so let's avoid this one. Let's try a random forest regressor instead. I tried a random forest regressor, and this is a, a great algorithm for data sets with many features, and there are a lot of features that can make up a player's value. Using advanced metrics like BPM, win shares, and VORP, I computed the average baseline error, which was a very high 39.5. However, the mean average error was only 1.52 degrees, which is an incredible increase. The accuracy of this model was a great 96.83%. Finally, we found a model capable of predicting a player's value. As we see here, after testing the model, we see that VORP is an 81% importance, and we see that points is 1% as the second highest. And points being second highest does make sense, but it might be more a bit of correlation than causation, because the higher value players are often the ones taking more shots, meaning they're going to score more points. The higher the point total, does indicate usually that a player's value to their team, but it doesn't always mean that the player is more valuable league-wide. There are plenty of instances of younger players who have less value than those more experienced players, but have similar point totals because they're on worse teams and thus have more opportunity. I was also surprised to see that games, blocks, and steals didn't mean anything. However, games probably don't affect the outcome of a player's day-to-day. They only affect the way that a voter could perceive, oh, if they played less than half the games this season, they actually didn't provide as much value. In terms of blocks and steals, defensive metrics are often team-based. These are the only two that are not. However, these 
statistics have very low variance, meaning that the high end, an incredible season, a player that has maybe 2.8 blocks, which would be a defensive player of the year level season. However, an average season, it's probably about 1.2. The difference of 1.6 between great and average probably doesn't mean it's very important. Using these importance values that we see on the last slide, I'm going to take one of this year's MVP candidates, Nikola Jokic, and find his value compared to an average player from the season, Brooke Lopez. We can see their statistics as follows. Jokic averaged many points, assists, and rebounds, as well as had very high advanced metrics, while Lopez had fairly moderate to below average ratings and few statistics. As we see here, Jokic has 10 points higher than Lopez in the value rating. This calculation fits the example, and it shows that superstars are truly much more valuable than the average player. Not that they are just a little bit more valuable, but they are much more valuable. So after using this data, I decided to have a little fun with it. As a basketball fan, a question I often think about is who has had the best season ever? For this example, we are only using seasons post-2000 for a couple reasons. One of them, it's the year I was born, so I don't know as much about the game before my lifetime, and these are the players I grew up with, so it's more fun to debate. Secondly, not all analytics were available for each player until around that season. These analytics are not as relevant before then because not every player has had them applied, meaning these statistics have been created in the last decade or so, and people have gone back and created them for many players before, these statistics were created, but not everybody back in the 90s and beyond. So we can test this. Let's take a look at the top three season scores from earlier and compute this value rating for each. The highest value a player's ever had. In third place, 2019 James Harden finished second in the MVP vote and had a value rating of 11.898. In second place, 2017 Russell Westbrook, who won the MVP that year, had 11.906 value rating. And in first place, with the greatest season since 2000, in 2010, LeBron James won the MVP with a crazy high 12.157 value rating. He had an incredibly high value over replacement player with 10.3 and a historical level of 18.5 win share season. There have only been a handful of instances where players had even close to as high as he had that year. The problem with predicting NBA votes, there's a lot of variables that can go into MVP voting, and these can vary depending on who is casting the vote. As we can see with these metrics, we can determine who is valuable, but that doesn't always mean that when the voting comes around, they will receive those votes. As we saw, James Harden in 2019 had the third greatest season in the last 20 years, but lost the award to Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is one of my favorite players, and I'm very happy he won the award. However, he didn't have as great of a season as Harden. This is partially due to voter fatigue. Harden won the year before, and voters don't want to vote for a player two years in a row. We've seen this before in many other scenarios. Even if you use these statistics and models, a lot of the statistics can depend on the strength of teammates or lack thereof. In the other two cases, 2017 Westbrook had some of the worst teammates possible. His team had an above average season, but that's because he was excellent. And his statistics can even get a little bit inflated because of this. We see the same thing with 2010 LeBron James win shares. His team won a lot of games, all due to his success, and the win shares reflect that. 